when we watch EU. You know, like it feels like EU just went to sleep on the, everyone except for Iraqi. <laughs> like, I don't know why Celeste falls so far down the priority pick in in Europe, but she's definitely high on the list in North America. So. No surprise there in the draft. Kinetic taking the Lance away, something we actually recommended people consider earlier today during the EU portion of the broadcast, maybe putting a little bit more priority on getting rid of this pick if it's something you think is going to cause you some trouble. Kinetic says it does. This means Velocity will get the Lyra first pick. Interesting. Kestrel comes through the draft as well as Samuel. No saw for Kinetic, though. At least not yet. I was trying to remember if Aloha was playing the Black Feather when I was watching. I forget what he was playing, but he just dumpstered on the opponent. It was like a 12-0-7 game or something like that. But it was nice to see. It was the first time i seen in a while that Aloha was kind of back in his uh, old form. And it's going to get locked in here. So we're going to have that Sky Black Feather. A lot of mobility for this team. Yeah, we see uh, someone who can actually go in a little bit with the Lyra. I, I personally am not the biggest fan of Black Feather and Lyra together. Neither am I. But maybe this squad has got something figured out in the strategy that they can kind of put forward. It's just going to be very difficult when, when, when Lyra goes in. Sky doesn't really want to follow. Blackfeather can, which is pretty good, but Kinetic can just focus Lyra when she goes in instead of trying to expend damage onto Blackfeather or wait for Sky to engage. And when you have a Kestrel, you have a Samuel, that's a lot of upfront damage you can pump out into a single target. So can Lyra stay alive when she pulls? Liking this hero at the moment. Yeah, Zeo sort of went like from the Vox Superstar to Celeste to Saw, now Sky, but I think she's going to be lowering in uh, you know, just a bit of damage. Pond Original is here with Cole as well, but not going to be enough to bring down that Sky. And Veins on this Lyra. I'm a little surprised we didn't see really any early aggression into lane with him. Yeah, definitely. Uh, not the norm. Typically, if a Lyra is in the roam position, it's going to be just sitting in the lane at all times, trying to put out as much harassment as possible. However, the same can be true when you have a Kestrel. But right now, in the 2v2, it is Zeo getting the upper hand. Yeah, first kill going to go over to the Hammers. And, well, Pawn and Aloha. Who actually got that? Looks like Aloha, perhaps? I'm not entirely too sure actually picked up the last two there on the Treant. But, you know, Retribution, even if that was uh, a kill there to pawn. It's uh, still the rest of the jungle being taken out here by Velocity. Yeah, and the, the treant, the back treant did go to Zeo. He okay, had the cool. little animation under him. Aloha just took the forward one. And now they are going to be going ahead and, I mean, getting that first kill really helps the momentum. And, of course, Velocity, as much as we were talking about, they are you know, still very friendly. <laughs> yeah, Veins. Oof. Not entirely too sure what he thought was happening there, but uh, he is going to be able to outdistance oh. some of those autos, so he's going to be okay. His plan there was just to hold the minion wave and keep it from getting underneath the turret. I don't think he quite expected for Mixi and Cole the Beak to go quite so aggressively onto him. Uh, it has to be thankful that he didn't go down, and of course, being Lyra has the heals, but Mixi does not have the heals, and Zeo just straight up 1v1s him. We have seen some weapon. Uh, some weapon skies before, and you know, Sky did start off with a weapon blade, but right into the crystal, those four barrages are going to hurt. And when you got Vayne there to, you know, just kind of slow them up, not really too much Mixi is able to do about it, it seems. So now it's all about Kinetic again, just putting on the pressure. Look at Vayne's. He's going to be just regrouping here with Zeo. Kinetic is still thinking of finding something. Vayne's is going to split. Looks like he's going to be the sacrificial lamb. Assuming we can actually get Cole to pick that up. Yeah, it looks like the rest of Kinetic just had no interest in taking the low-hanging fruit. They wanted to go for the carries, and that they may not really get much of anything. Vayne's, okay, Vayne's get re, you know, turns back around. He is going to fall, but up in the lane, Zeo again. Three kills in a little over three minutes on the opposing laner. And back to the jungle. <laughs> Vayne's still alive. Cole is trying to do his best. Pawn should be able to pick it up pretty easily right there. But yeah, Zeo, it's all about that forward momentum, that forward barrage. He is kind of doing both here for the team because this Crystal Sky has now taken all three kills for his team. Yeah, that is definitely not what uh, Kinetic was hoping for. As a start to this, Zeo is just kind of flexing on Mixi up in the lane. Of course, once this game gets later, Mixi, you know, when he's finally able to get some items, he will be 
It's still able to be pretty strong as it is just a Samuel, but very oh. far behind right now. 46 to 23 CS. Oh, Aloha. If he got out of that, it would just be God status right there. But they set that up very nicely. Kinetic had himself uh, not only the bush control, but they also had that active camo. Gonna have to use it here. Nice stun. Pawn is going to turn that one around. Zio now on the retreat, but Mikshi gets sweet retribution. And he might not even be done yet. He's looking for Veins, but Veins has himself the sigil. He's going to heal up, and I don't think Mikshi can really go diving for it. But all of a sudden, three and three. Kinetic, again, with the pressure. And they are actually going to have a slight gold lead, despite the fact that Mikshi is down pretty heavily in lane farm but it's because upon the original you know it's kind of gone a little bit unnoticed because of the fact that zeo has been just getting these solo kills onto mixi but bonnie original is dominating the jungle right now 36 to 16 in terms of cs you think about it that's also our first kestrel of the day here bacon there was just pretty much a perma ban honor over in eu but now just showing strong colors. So yeah, Mikshi down in a farm in lane, but it's Aloha starving out in the jungle. Pawn has been pretty consistent on his side, even getting a kill, as we just, just did just see. So yeah, gold not that bad between these teams, and they know each other pretty much inside and out at this point. Yeah, doing a really good job thus far, you know, keeping the game even. And Pawn the original using this Kestrel. There's a reason why Kestrel has been uh, receiving so much priority in the pick fan phase and uh, well upon the original is kind of showing a little bit of why here this even with a losing lane if you can dominate the jungle you can still have control over the pacing well game's not over yet bacon so we'll just kind of see where we go from here but six minutes in six kills in total Zeo's going to be looking, uh, he definitely has the cash, he's going to go get that broken myth right now. We got fountains coming out both sides, Mixi is uh, going to be close here, and Kinetic actually leading the fan vote uh, back when we asked them to look for it. I'm not entirely too sure I would have expected that over the branding of Hammers. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's, there's a lot of different ideas behind it, sometimes it's just the fan base of the individual players. I know uh, Mikshi and Cold the Meek both have uh, quite a few fans, and obviously so does Zio, Veins, and Aloha, but Cold the Meek may have one of the most polarizing fan bases out there, I think. <laughs> like it's, you know, it feels like everyone either loves him or despises him, so we'll have to see how this one goes. Right now, obviously, the vote's not going to bother them. Yeah, Aloha, though, has to be very careful. The Oblivion not quite hitting him. There's the gauntlet, and Zeo just can't really go anywhere else. Does not have that uh, reflex block ready to go. Looking for a one-shot, but Pawn is going to miss the mark. Aloha is going to be just smartly behind that turret. No way you're going to hit him there, but man, Aloha just taking the brunt of that one. Had to make a quick exit, and that led us into Zeo getting caged up with that gauntlet, so... That will put Kinetic in the driver's seat of this game after breaking open this uh, kind of shaky start. Yeah, absolutely. Four to three now, and Gold all of a sudden jumping up pretty sharply in the favor of Kinetic as they have about a 2,000 gold lead on their hands. Is in the lane farm, again, it's still very heavily in favor of Zeo, but that jungle has been uh, completely controlled by upon the original having that sorrow blade completed there is also the breaking or the broken myth for mixi up in the lane meanwhile on the reverse side aloha just sitting on the shiver steel and a couple of tier one and tier two items in his inventory yeah he does have that attack speed coming up but aloha's going to have to kind of tank up if he wants to weather the storm he's really the only front line we got here and if Vayne's, once he hits level 6, we can use some of those portals, getting Aloha into that back line, or at least you know, closing the distance. It's going to save himself a charge of that Rose Offensive. So we'll have to see how things do unfold. Vayne's does hit 6 now. Everybody has their uh, heroics ready to go. And you know, when it comes down to it, Zeo, he's still farming up the storm. 94 and counting. Well, he is going to be taking some beef here, and he might even drop. He is all alone under that turret. Yeah, well, now he's got some help from his friends, and... Is going to be getting out alive, at least for now. The rest of Kinetic are still looking for a fight. And in oh, fact, no, Zio may have just turned this. Yes, he did. Cole the Meek hits the boots. Just Bane saying, no dice. 
We are going to gauntlet over the wall, but <laughs> there's a lot of people that can follow you there, Cold. So it's just the distraction tactics. We got Pawn the original to safety, and it will not be an ace. But Velocity do pick up two for their trouble. Yeah, they managed to find two of those kills. Mixi did avoid, uh, or sorry, Pawn the original avoided going down in that tussle, but it is still... A, another pretty aggressive game, not quite as aggressive as you know that last one we saw in Europe, but upon the original coming back strong up into the lane, trying to take damage onto Zeal, Oof. but they just haven't been able to find a kill. Uh, nicely done there for Veins. Did take some of the damage, but he also made sure that he tanked up that uh, one shot, one kill. Aloha just kind of coming barreling out of the bushes. Making sure he can get up to his team, but Zeo does go home. Picked up two items now. Ten minutes in, he has some uh, that spell vamp to go with that Eve of Harvest, and with him coming back into this full mana, basically full everything. Medic, they're just gonna have to fall back. And they are, and I mean they aren't gonna be too upset about that. It's better to just retreat and, and keep yourself alive, not give over any potential objectives, than to try and go too aggressive and end up giving up. Uh, you know, some power spikes, but in in the meantime, Cole the Meek in the lane with Mixi. Again, Zio is just really doing so well for himself in that lane matchup. Whether it's a one on one or two v two with the roamers up there, it doesn't seem to matter. Zio is just constantly coming out on top of these trades. Oh, all right, nine kills in ten minutes. You did mention the last game in the EU. We had twenty kills in ten minutes uh, back then. But I mean, still, Bloodthirsty is nine kills, in eleven minutes. It's still pretty close to a kill around, as they have clashed fairly frequently. Not really a lot of attention to the gold mine here, Bacon, and we might get one pull at it uh, at this rate before that Kraken does come through. But Aloha. I mean, what do you think his next tier 3 is going to be at this point? Because they might be looking for a fight, he's not going to get the chance to use it. Uh, Cole actually throws the gauntlet a little bit far to the right. Veins is down so low, he has to use that portal. But the Oblivion, they turn it to right back around. Zeal got some big damage with that forward barrage. And now Aloha is just going to have to get his retreat covered here by Zeal, who's doing a fantastic job of keeping Cole at bay. Yeah, both teams doing a great job of staying alive, but Cole the Meek is very, very low. <laughs> Might be falling this forward barrage. No, oh, just so stays alive. Mixi not going to find... Actually, he does find one hit onto Zeo with the Malice and Verdict. Oh, now the original is coming up. He has energy, and he can put some great damage in. And Velocity are able to get to that shop. They picked up infusions. They hit some potions, and they are still struggling to find that kill. Cole is still so low. The rest of Kinetic is going to be on the retreat. Whoever can picks up the Treant might have a bit of a better opportunity here, but Pawn is going to get some pot shots off, and Zeo comes in from the flank. That's going to be the shield. Pawn is still alive. Cole trying to get in front of him. Zeo's going to walk right by him. And there we go. Finally, two kills are going to happen. Cole the Meek not going to get stunned up, but he has nowhere really to go. If he gauntlets over the wall again, I swear, but he doesn't even have it up. Yeah, it's still 40 seconds left on that cooldown, and this will be an ace for Hammers Esports Velocity. And finally, at long last, it seems like maybe one of these teams might grab some firm control on this game as this will be a turret going down in the lane and the gold mine going over to Velocity. As you mentioned, it may end up being the only gold mine of the game. I would expect it. I mean, 13 minutes in, it's, you can get maybe a, what, a decent at best? If, if you get, like, if they get an ace or two kills, like, shortly before the Kraken spawns, then maybe they go for it just because there's, why not? Might as well get as much gold as you can out of that play. But other than that, yeah, there's really not going to be much focus on the gold miner at all until uh, Kraken spawns. And at that point, it's too late. So the builds starting to take shape. Aloha did actually go into the Serpent's Mask. I was I was wondering if it was going to be a Serpent's Mask or Breaking Point as his first offensive Tier 3, but did go for the Serpent's Mask. I would expect the Breaking Point to come out still, along with just more tank items to help stay alive and sustain through these fights, because mm. they have already been very long-lasting team fights. It just feels like with that healing from the Lyra, Hammer's Velocity have had the slight edge when that happens. We did just pop the treads there from Veins, looking for a pick there with Aloha, but unfortunately come up a little bit empty. And Aloha, as you did say, a little bit more offensive. So we'll have to see if that works out for him by the end of it all. 
Veins is looking into a Crucible. Did go into the Treads first, and we got the Atlas there from Cole. No Tread, uh, no Crucible, sorry, in sight. Uh, no Treads either. Cole is just going to be working on those probably next. But, yeah, we have some Infusions down, and the Kraken's about to be coming up here, Bacon. There's still quite a few turrets left, so even with the Kraken, not entirely too sure it's going to be a game. Yeah, definitely uh, not going to be game just yet. It's still... Uh, the Kraken, if it does happen uh, sooner, uh, after the 15-minute mark than later, will have a lot of work to do. So I think it, it's definitely going to take at least two more fights, like bare minimum, most likely even more, the way these two teams have been going at it. But uh, right now, Kinetic is looking to find a position as upon <laughs> a, expected someone to be coming up there. Not too bad to just throw that out. If, if it happens to hit something, it looks like an absolute heroic play. Instead, it just looks a little bit silly for now. But as they are just definitely very much concerned about this next team fight, Kinetic are. Yeah, well, when you're down 8 and 4 and, well, 1,000 gold, I mean, there is some cause for concern, but it's not an overwhelming sort of, uh, you know, destructive feeling. There's definitely still a chance that Kinetic can win out this next fight, but if they don't have any vision and nothing scouting going down, they're not going to know that this Kraken is going to be bearing down on them, and that window is going to be closing here fairly shortly. Yeah, absolutely, and right now, with the jungle getting cleared out, Kinetic just looking to get that little bit extra gold they need for infusions and maybe a stretch for a last tier 3 item. Mixi has a lot of gold on him. Will actually finish off the Frostburn and get a infusion. But while that was happening, Hammer's Lossy just went ahead and said, okay, we'll just take Kraken. And they yeah. had vision control of the area. They knew if anyone was coming or not. And well, when no one from Kinetic showed up, they just took it down. Yep, easy peasy, man. If you're not going to contest it, I'll just take it for free. Now, you did actually pick up some of those infusions that you did say, Bacon, and Mixi three items. Like, that's, that's a lot of hope now riding on top of Mixi. We're not quite there for the third for Pawn. He doesn't even have that Aegis yet, but he does have the two. And Kestrel might be the first pick of the day, but might also be a loss because Cole throws out the gauntlet. They do catch Zeo actually twice, I think, through it, but there's not a lot of follow-up, and they are still going to be standing. Veins will heal up, no problem. Aloha's the distraction, and the turret is just busy with the Kraken. This is now going to be, again, more pressure on top of Kinetic. Yep, next turret up is going to be that third lane turret. Mixi and Pond the Original going back up for a little bit of healing. They got Zeo very low, but he's still hanging in there. Oblivion not going to connect. Yeah, just so very close, inches and centimeters. But Veins is still working wonders here for his team. The Bulwark to stop him up. Zeo goes in and picks up a double as well. Now it's oh, going to be just this Kraken pushing down. They don't even care about Pawn. And as I said, Kestrel might be the first pick of the day, but also not going to be looking at a good record to start things off. And, you know, I said it was going to be at least two fights, but, well, when Kraken goes over for free, that kind of negates one of the expected fights, and now they're pushing in for the victory. Yeah, Aloha's just tanking up the damage. Pawn might get a kill, might even get two. But, well, he might still hold this one. Here comes the rest of the team, and the turret is going to drop. So we've kind of ah, given a bit too much. <laughs> yeah. I think we gave a bit too much credit there to Velocity. But Kinetic will hold. They are down 10-7. They're only down 1,000 gold. But there is nothing left of a safety net for him. Was it too much credit to Velocity or just not enough credit to Pond the Original? Able to make the play there. While well, everyone, yes, was very low on the side of velocity still being able to come out and clean everything up get the kills and get the ace allow your team to take down kraken this is an opportunity for kinetic to get into the jungle and clear out as much as they can get as much gold as possible so that they are in the best condition they can be for the next fight yeah, let's just look for four items, Zeo. Okay, sounds like a good idea. Goes for a little bit of extra pierce. I mean, we do have some Aegis now forming up and swells, you know, those reflex spots and everything else. So, Zeo's going to have a little bit of extra pierce on the one. We're still looking for a contraption on veins, but Aloha, just not going to be tanking up really that, that much. He's just more than happy to pick up tier three boots, and he's just going to go right back at it. Absolutely, and well... This next fight could be the one that decides the game if it goes the way of Velocity. 
Kinetic still have a I'm lot not... <laughs> of work to do to find a victory, and here we go. Veins, okay, gonna be caught. That's no problem. That's gonna be a gauntlet. I'm surprised nobody's just rushing down the uh, crystal at this point, but gauntlet defeated. We just turn it around. That's gonna be a mix. She might have a lot of damage, but he is dead in the water, and Aloha's not even gonna drop. This time, you have to chase down Pawn, but Pawn is trying to get the damage, and he's just gonna come up short. Zeal puts him down. Zeal is up 11 kills. This game, 11 of the 13, he is the one to take him home. It's the same idea for Pawn, he's at 6 of those 7. But as I said, there's no more safety net and bacon. We have ourselves a game 1 going against the grain of the viewer vote. And why bother rushing down the crystal when you can get yourself another ace before you do so? As that, This was just the Zeo show. I mean, from the onset, yes, he died a few times there when everyone from Kinetic seemed to be gunning for him, but... Starting off the game with three kills in the lane against your laner, and then just going crazy in a couple of fights at the end. A couple of triple kills going the way of Zeo on this sky. 11-3-1. Very impressive.